Whoa, what time is it? It's time to look at plays. Stick around. Hello again, it's Greg with abetterofficial.com where we craft video to help basketball officials get better and take control of their officiating career. Welcome to another edition of Five Play Fridays where we look at plays and see what we can take from them so that we can get better as basketball officials. Five Play Fridays is a weekly series with new videos releasing every Friday during the basketball season. Make sure to hit subscribe and also the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our new videos. A quick thank you for those who bought us a cup of coffee this week. Very generous and much appreciated. Thank you. You can always buy us a coffee at abetterofficial.com slash coffee. Now let's look at plays. The point of this play is to recognize whether or not we have a shooting foul. If you are inclined to say this is not a shooting foul, I encourage you to check the action on the play and get a clear understanding of when the habitual throwing motion begins, basically the shooting motion by the player. This is a ball handler dribbler. She is dribbling the ball. She picks up the ball. Okay, the foul has not yet occurred. The foul occurs with the hip check right here that drives the player off their line. Okay, this is absolutely a shooting foul, and the player should be awarded two free throws. Right here, she's a dribbler. She has begun her habitual throwing motion here. The foul occurs here. When the player extends her hips, trail official, primary defender, open look. Foul. That's a shooting foul. Two free throws awarded. All right, new lead is beaten on this play, has to find an angle to observe. Has a great angle on the play, the camera angle, which is what we need. So white 25 is tracking down this player. We have an airborne shooter in a vulnerable position. We got White with body contact and the extended arm on the vulnerable player. <clears throat> yes, he has a hand up in the air, but this is there is no attempt on the ball here. None. First order of business. So we have a, a captain of the team signaling to the coach, coach, come on out. We're going to do that anyway. But first order of business is make sure that all the players are good, right? This is a hard foul. We, the possibility exists for retaliatory action. See the coach coming on. We're going to have communication between the crew about what's going to happen. We're going to upgrade this play. It's going to be an intentional foul. We'll shoot two free throws, and we'll have the resulting throw in nearest the spot of the foul. 
great job by the off official. Says, well, hey, we're gonna, who's going to shoot our free throws? We had a coach come on to attend to his injured player. By rule, that player needs to be replaced unless the coach wants to buy him in with a timeout. So we'll get our substitute. We'll make that offer that the coach can buy him in. The coach declines to buy him in. So the substitute will shoot. We'll shoot two free throws, and we'll have the ball at the spot of the foul. Another angle on the play. The extension of the arm by White 25 really seals the deal on this play. Just a review. Airborne player, defenseless position, no play on the ball, excessive contact, easy call. Remember, points of emphasis for 2018. NFHS wants to reduce concussions by eliminating rough play, always eliminating rough play. This is clearly a rough play situation. Penalize accordingly. First of all, when you know that a team has elevator play, right, very common play structure with a guard moving up the lane, two players at the elbow providing screening action, allowing the player to get an open shot, okay? On this throw-in, the center is officiating this. And we have screening action on a moving opponent. We need to know the rules regarding screening action. Okay, When we screen a moving opponent, we must give time and distance. This screener clearly does not give time for the defender to avoid the contact. That is an illegal screen by rule. So um, very common for teams to run this with players moving up the lane. It's also common for players to, to run it sideways. Early in your game, if we can detect the team uses elevator plays, that helps us in anticipation of calls. When we analyze our game video, the evidence of our call accuracy comes to bear. Okay? This is a call incorrect. We're judging the legality of the defender. Player begins to drive. Prior to going airborne, left foot determines that. Left foot's on the floor. Defender is in legal guarding position. This is incorrectly ruled a block, but that's not really the important part of the play. This is call incorrect. You could say, man, that's super close. It's a 50-50 play. But the bottom line is the calling official is ball watching. And when you analyze your game video, these are the things that come to bear, right? Right here, the lead official is watching this action. This is not 
the primary defender belonging to the lead. The lead is responsible for players in their primary and secondary defenders on a drive down the lane. Calls made confidently, sold. Again, it's a 50-50 play. Some would say easy block charge, players leaning back or whatever, a bunch of extraneous stuff. The bottom line is the player is legal. The player is at the spot on the floor prior to the player going airborne. The problem is the lead official is not officiating that player and is surprised by it. So when you analyze your game video, there'll be plays that occur and you thought you knew what happened on the play because your brain does a good job of piecing things together and filling in the blanks, but recognize when what occurs in your game is not what you thought occurred in your game and take it for what it's worth. If you are ball watching plays outside your primary, you will not have the call accuracy that you want as a basketball official. The National Federation of High School point of emphasis for 2018, one of them is guarding and verticality plays. We're judging the verticality, uh, the legality of the defender on this play. What we're trying to determine is whether they go from point A to point B or whether they go straight up. We've got an airborne shooter, defensive player, jumps from here, contacts the airborne player, certainly has his hands up in the air, and we need to judge the legality. This play obviously belongs to the lead. That's their primary coverage area. We're watching the play here. We're seeing where everybody's looking. We're in good position as a crew. Center's in a great spot. Trail's in a great spot. We got a lot of action between the lead and the trail. Then we have a sudden drive down the lane. Contact. Tough for the trail to help on this play. Center has a great look at a secondary coverage play. But we've got no call on the play. Clearly comes into our offensive player. That's a defensive foul. So again, that's a foul. One of the points of emphasis last year was illegal contact with the lower body. Defenders learning to play with their hands up, but using other tactics, right? This is a play where the defender, yeah, he's got his arms straight up, but the body contact is the foul. Hey, before we go, just a quick fun play. Made my day the other day. Just a fun play to end this episode and a reminder of the fact that we get to see fun, exciting things on a nightly basis as basketball officials. Hey, everybody. Thanks for sticking around. I'm getting to the end of the video. Much appreciated. We do have additional videos available. Check those out. But if you do me a favor right now and just like this video, if you felt it provided value to you, if you want to share it to your association, your group, that's much appreciated. So we can all get better together here at abetterofficial.com. Take care.